share this with you. Uh, uh, thank you again Excellent. for joining. And, uh, you know, um, uh, today, you know, basically we were going to talk about, um, you know, and thank you again for joining the paper that we're planning. Um, so if we think about a timeline and an outline, and then we'll discuss how to divide work. I have some ideas. Um, if we think about the goal, uh, you know, so, so one of the targets is like September 19th to 23. I don't know if we want to submit before then. I mean, it'd be great if we could, but I'm not sure if we can uh, make it. But, you know, that is when the next BAMF meeting is. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's the there's the option of submitting before or waiting till after and having a little bit more from that meeting there. But um, we can talk about that. Um, that's seven months from now. So, you know, I was thinking and I mentioned uh, there's this is a, a paper that I worked on with a drug company I helped read some um, cases for. And, um, you know, they had an outline like this and they had a timeline. And it was kind of helpful. It kind of gave me the idea to do that. And, and, and you know, their, their timeline was kind of tight. You know, they'd have like a, you know, outline, but they'd only give three days. And, you know, uh, you know I think we need more time. This was a pretty tight um, timeline. So, so when we think about, you know, the timeline, if we have seven months, um, you know, we can spend a month for the outline, a month, uh, three months or so for writing and soliciting of um, a paragraph or so from the contributors and mm -hmm. assembling a final version for one month. Uh, we can circulate that for one month and then we can uh, revise that final version um, for one month based on the uh, circulation that we went through. Um, sure. so, so that's kind of a little bit of a timeline. Uh, yeah. If we think of, of next dates, um, you know, the next uh, March 3rd, I think we can meet then the 17th is the week before USCAP. It's the Thursday before USCAP, but I'm not sure if um, people are going to be uh, traveling or whatever. Uh, we, we can talk about it closer to then. Um, but, you know, uh, and we can also think about our prior paper and the new paper. Um, we had an introduction uh, in the prior paper, and I think we can do that again. We had a survey with um, material and methods of that, and so we can do that again. But the survey is different. This time it's, uh, before it was a survey of digital pathology routine practice, whereas this time it's sort of the image bank possibilities. And then discussion, we have a lot more this time. We have, we've had a lot of guest speakers, inf including you, uh, uh, Richard, uh, on the novel microscopy. And so, you know, I, I was thinking, and I can write, you know, like depending on what, how it works. I think first I'll try to ask like these people for, um, you know, a paragraph on their work. Uh, but, you know, if not, I, you know, and if it comes to that, I can do a draft and get them to approve it. Um, I think first I'll, I'll try to ask for a little like draft of their sort of portion of the paper. And, and I, I guess, you know, in the prior paper, when we think about that, you know, the introduction included some of the proceeds at the last BAMF meetings. So, so it included some of the speeches and stuff like that that people gave. Um, I don't know if we want to include that. These talks like that people have given to, and these have been great and I think we should discuss them in the paper, but I'm not sure if it should be in the introduction or the discussion. Um, some of it kind of goes to the discussion because it provides the image bank, like the, the pilot, that we have and the potential for the pilot with, um, you know, Peter Bohr. So, um, you know, we can think about that, where, where the, those will go best. Um, and then we do have the proceeds of the survey. Um, I'm not gonna re, re go over this, but, you know, we, we, went, we have several of these things we can talk about. Um, and definitely this can go in the paper, probably in the results section. Um, and so, so um, you know, we can talk about all these things. I've actually been over these before and the potential specimens that are out there. And, um, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, I think, um, you know, we definitely want to include Hatavi or at least acknowledge her or whoever um, else that helped with this survey. Um, you know, so, so we want to include those people. Um, but that's basically what I have on the paper so far. And, you know, I'll go back to this and sort of let you all comment on that, the outline and the timeline, if you have any comments on those things. Yeah, I, I think that 
the paper needs to flow in an interesting way. And I think your idea of putting a lot of the people's presentations in the discussion makes a lot of sense to me as a way to make it, make it sort of more focused and targeted um, rather than thinking that we have to have every presentation we've ever had in the sort of introduction that that and and, and it gives us an opportunity maybe to refer to things twice to some extent like we're interested in image banks maybe we could just mention the ones that we're directly associated with but then have the details of them later, maybe. But I think it it's it's quite flexible, and and that we 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 shouldn't feel that there needs to be a rigid structure we have to follow. I think it's 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 more important to have a paper that that reads in a logical, sequential way, and. There's a thought just occurred to me, um, which would make this uh, uh, a little bit different, um, which is uh, to discuss, they don't exist, but uh, to discuss image banks of, of alternative imaging methods. Uh, because, um, you know, there are a million H&Es out there. How many two photon, how many mu's, all of that out there, and how can people look at them and compare and apply their algorithms to these other imaging modalities? Sure. No, I think that that would be very exciting. And people would say, how did this get in the paper? Then they'd look at the author list and see you there and they'd know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, we definitely should include that. And, um, you know, um, I think providing these sort of a venue for people and you know when i when i sort of like talk about the paper um you know i can tell people that basically you know they they can if, if anyone else wants to even though they haven't presented um you know they could uh you know we could give the opportunity to the people in the group to bring in other things in the discussion even if they haven't presented um like, I don't think Laura Barrisoni presented a full time period like Levinson or Panaki or uh, Dr. Kane, but, you know, she, she presented some nice peritubular capillary work. And, and in several of our presentations, she has presented her work. And so, you know, we can give people, even though they haven't been the full time period on one of our sessions, they, you can give them opportunity to put their work in there if they want to. Right. And so. I, I think the other thing she said, which is quite, quite important, we shouldn't look down on authors who, quotes, just coast, who don't actually actively write in the paper. If they've been a part of the action that we are, we are describing, um, and if they approve of what's being written, it's actually quite cumbersome if you have a lot of authors and they're all trying to write, write thing at the same time, right? I mean, not just their part, but the whole, whole thing. So I think um, last time we had a lot of very prominent people making no suggestions or changes. So, I mean, that is, that's, that's a kind of way that a lot of papers proceed, I think, with the main writing being done by maybe two or three people. And, and there's no scorn that needs to be directed to the others. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all fine. So, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'm totally fine with, um, you know, it, it depends on the journal, which I think most journals are fine with tons of authors. So, you know, I'm totally fine with um, us having a, a number of authors, um, you know, um, you know, and, and even if they don't do a lot, I, like, for example, I have collaborators who 
can't make it. And I hear at this time period, and even though they haven't been able to join some of our sessions, I, I still would love to include them. And um, so, like you say, um, maybe finding a way, um, you know, to still include people and, uh, and with a reason, yeah. you know. Um, so my situation is different. At the time of the previous paper, the two students who are second and third author hadn't had very many papers with me and I really needed to, you know, reward them and so on. We don't need that again. So, I mean, we don't need uh, Ishita Mogi and, and Simon Wu to be authors this time. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I don't want a lot of sort of hangers on that you know, the justification for them being authors are, are extremely weak kind of thing. Well, as long as we um, just put, you know, the author contributions, you know, discussion, editing, content, and basically, sure. you know, uh, um, you, you put up the, the, uh, the footnote or whatever and says, basically did nothing for this paper, then, then we can include them. <laughs> yes. Oh. Or not, we <laughs> decide that or not. Those, those people we don't need to to include. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I I leave some of that up, up to you, Brad. I mean, if there are you know collaborators of yours that help with things on a sort of daily basis kind of thing, but maybe didn't do anything specifically for this paper, but are still willing to look at it and you know give you feedback. I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, there could be some people like that. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll give it some more thought and see if we can figure out how to handle this in a sure appropriate manner. <laughs> um, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I need to look at again at how many, you know, is as we look at the how to circulate this. I mean, we have a mailing list now and of the you know that it goes out to the meeting appointment things and and things like that and um you know and and i and i haven't heard yet if anyone is like not um interested you know no one's told me hey stop sending me this so <laughs> so so uh, even though you know we don't have keep any, your spam away from me yeah yes. so, so nobody said that, that eh? so yeah, yeah. but um you know, if, um, you know, th that list may be too long for, uh, so we may need to figure out a way to, um, some of the people, I don't even know how they got added. Um, I think it just, they got forwarded to someone. So, so it's probably not feasible to include everyone who, no, no. Um, but maybe the, the original group and then new people who've been very active, that might sure. be the way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so um, that that's Sounds probably good. yeah the original authors, and then people who've been active, um, and um, yeah. So that that that's probably the way to do it. Um, you know that I was in another Banff working group, and and they're just now doing a paper, the thrombotic microangiopathy group, and right. they had a really formal way of um, it was a Delphi method. Uh, paper they followed the Delphi method and which you know I'm not an expert on but anyway she had a pretty good way of saying hey if you don't do this and give me an email by this date then I'm not going to include you not something like paper. that yeah. yeah so so yeah and I guess there's a way of yeah I, I could I might have I hate to do that I'm not that kind of person but I may end up having to do Sure. Something similar yeah. to that. Because um, if yeah. you don't hear like yes or no, I mean, like you say, uh, when you do the footnote for the sort of contributions, you at least need to be able to confirm that they reviewed it. So, right. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that makes sense. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, yes. So, so I think, you know, with the timeline, you know, with this will give a month, I can start uh, thinking about how to do the outline um, and uh, have that um, done. And um, yeah, and so um, 
and then we'll start soliciting uh, contributions and, and do the drafting. Um, you know, yes. So I think this is doable. Um, do you think submitting by Banff would be a goal or should we wait till after? No, I think we, we might as well submit after. That gives a maximum possibility that that will have highly significant and uh, you know um, just break, breaking news kind of thing yeah so so so, uh, so yeah so yeah. so after the band uh, meeting yeah. okay yeah because we had one before so okay well that that pushes this timeline a little bit further back um but not too much and maybe i should re i could rethink how we want to we would want to be able to incorporate that last information quickly. Um, so maybe that could go in the discussion also. Um, you know, anything that happens there. I don't know yet. I don't think we're gonna have as big a session as we did last time, are we? Um, well, there, there, there's still a kind of question of how people will react to the idea of coming to a face-to-face -face Banff meeting. So I know I'm gonna be there with, with my new car and, <laughs> and my old car too, and I can take people there and, and so on. But I think we, we, we we're actually talking about this, I think on March 4th about the plans for a meeting, the Banff Foundation is, discussing it, but I, th I think we have to kind of be prepared either way for, you know, 500 some, if we get that, that sort of a venue capacity or, or, you know, something less than a hundred, maybe less than 50, that might also happen. So I, th I think we want a face-to-face -face component but the hybrid nature of the meeting could be very skewed toward the virtual, you know, depending upon what happens with the pandemic between now and September and what Putin does and all sorts of other things. Yeah. I'm heading off to an optics meeting, <clears throat> biomedical imaging, uh, this weekend. And yeah. so few people uh, are coming. The organizers aren't even coming. <laughs> I, wow. I, I'm now the acting conference chair, and I'm chairing two sessions and giving two talks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What I, what I thought about the recording today, Brad, is the conversation before you started the PowerPoint where it was very enjoyable and good for bonding, but I don't think we need it in the recording. So... I, I think it would be better to sort of start the recording where, where you started the PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. yeah. And, and I can, um, yeah, I can uh, post uh, this on, uh, you know, some, somewhere, uh, you know, I haven't been, been posting a lot. Uh, I don't know. Well, if, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want, you, you can send it to me and I, I can put it on, YouTube and and we we can then post it on the Banff uh, Foundation uh, page that we have for the working group. Um, TikTok. We need we need millions of followers. <laughs> TikTok. Yes. I I don't think this is really. There's not enough action. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 lacking the key elements first and it's and it's too long too you know it should be like 90 seconds or something like <laughs> TikTok, so. yeah. yeah we can start thinking of a ways of uh having a micro influencer type <laughs> strategy <laughs> yeah we, we we can also do that but it has to be different from the recordings <laughs> of these meetings yeah a model for how to give presentations at scientific meetings is you you get your your TikTok slot and that's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, <clears throat> I think they're they're having a renal pathology society meeting today too at eleven. And maybe one reason why we didn't have as many people too, because I have to join that too. I don't know if you're 
joining on that. Um, but yeah, there's no. a lot of me. I had one. Yeah, so yeah. we're all in a lot of meetings. But I think this is worth. Um, yeah, I, I can send you this video, and um, um, I think that basically covers it for today. I, I was gonna. I was sure. saying I'd wait till 30 minutes after and, and see. But I know um, if anyone else joins, but uh, I think that probably, um, I think that covers it for today. And, yeah, and, 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 and short videos, when people see like a 20 minute length or something, and we're a lot more likely to click on that than you know, 59 minutes or something, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I know how to edit video too, but you're a pro at that, so, and I'm, I'm I'm snowed under with cases. Uh, sure. No, out, you so. you can yeah. send me the whole thing, and then I'll edit off the the part before the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, so and I'm. Be good. I plan to put the um, collection back up at some point, like, because I realized there was a problem. I have them all on OneDrive, but I realized right. there's an issue with people getting on there. So yeah, sure. putting them, uh, I was thinking of. I do have Google Drive space, and it seems like Google Google Drive is a little bit more user friendly as far as letting people get on. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah. Right. The way you were doing it before, I just regularly gave up. <laughs> I went through a few steps. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> this isn't worth the effort. Yeah. Well, for members of Slack, it was good, but the, the Slack has not been as active. So we we can rekindle that probably too, but then. Slack only gives me a certain, um, I was going to, I could tell that the videos were going to start eating into that space and we want to keep that space for other things, um, you know, documents, sharing and things. So, so the videos are going to eat that up quick. Um, yeah, no, so. I'm happy to, to put it on my uh, YouTube and then have the links to them on the Banff uh, Foundation page. Enlightening to have a 15 minute discussion on the video on how to edit the video. <laughs> well, I, I the thing is, when people realize how skilled I am at that, they realize <laughs> I must spend much, much my time doing that. And huh? then they would also, one day they would realize that I must spend a lot of time watching myself. And that's true. A lot of people cannot do that. They psychologically can't watch a video that they're in. It just ah. makes them yeah, ill. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that either, honestly. But, yeah, but I I Eric, do a lot of that, of course. So, so anyway. have you seen Eric Glassy's videos? Yeah, yeah. They're I've they're seen. they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. Ah. Yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah, so I right. guess we'll meet in two weeks again and we can maybe continue Sounds this good. discussion. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, thanks again for joining Richard and uh, sure. you know, have a good day and y'all uh, take care and we'll, we'll definitely be in touch. Sounds good. Okay. okay right. great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. Take care. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.